I am Jeff. This is my Potter's Journal for late February 2024. I got a new toy! A stone grinding grain mill. Now, it's not for the pottery, but it needs a bowl to catch the flour. Let's see what's going on in the studio today. So, is it... what should I do? Should it just be a bowl? Or should it be a batter bowl? Or should it be a batter bowl with a handle? It's not something to jump right into. I didn't jump right into buying a home grain mill. I thought it over for about six months. Even tried to grind my own with other grinders from the kitchen, a meat grinder, the nut grinder, but none of them did the job. Finally, I found an antique wooden coffee, hand crank coffee grinder, and it did the job. It did it very coarsely, and the bread was so different than whole wheat flour that you would buy on the floor that I finally decided that I would go ahead and do it. And a prototype so we can give it a test run. But I did advance the design with some lines on the bottom. And in the batter bowl video I did, the spout worked so good, but I think for flour, we might be better with a flour hopper or maybe a funnel. And why? I'm so excited. Um, apparently, uh, people preparing for the end of the world as we know it. Okay, the grain, and actually I did buy grain in a sealed bag um, that uh, had a 30 year shelf life, and I think the grain, as long kept dry, um, has almost indefinite shelf life. But, um, the reason I got it is because it also came in a plastic storage bucket and if I'm going to be buying 25 or 50 pound sacks I would have the storage bucket. Now I guess they wouldn't be buying an electric one because how would they get gasoline for the generator? So, it would have to be hand-cranked if you're preparing for the end of the world as we know it. Um, and then we've got the extremes of health conscious. And I, um, and this overlaps probably into the next category too. Um, people who just want good bread. conscious part comes into it too. Um, all the nutrients are in it, nothing's taken out, it's um, real fresh and alive. It, um, our processed wheat flour, white flour, and even whole wheat flour is um, done in a way so that it has an ex a long shelf life. Um, um, if we wanted fresh ground wheat with everything in it, 
it would go bad. We would have to buy it, um, you know, on a weekly basis. So maybe that's something the world would come to, but that's something even my farmer's market director, um, who is so into foods, didn't seem to know much about. Other than uh, our bread baker, Mediterra Bakery, um, I guess uses fresh milk or does it themselves. Okay, now on this bowl, I first do the curve out like that, because if you start doing that, it um, it's harder to control. It, uh, I'm not a teacher, so I'm not giving you all the details on that. But um, that's the way it feels. Okay, and I guess now is the point. You can bring that out. Hopefully I've got the height that will fit when it shrinks under my mill. Um, I am going to do a shrink shrinkage roller. Make a hand in, in uh, coming up in a few videos. Okay. And I've got a very sharp, no fancy tool, just a Kemper wooden tool, not from some new big name, and I'm using that to trim the bottom. However, I did pick, <laughs> I guess, more of a designer mill, and somebody commented on it being one of the more expensive ones, but actually, it didn't seem to be if it was um, you know, 30 or 50 more than some of the others. Um, it seemed like once you decide you're going to do something for the long term, it should look good on the pot on the com on the counter, just as we want our pottery to look good on the counter. We could just use uh, plasticware of some kind. Okay, we've got a beautiful machine. We need a beautiful bowl to go with it. The beautiful bowl needs a beautiful, yeah, beautiful machine. Needs a beautiful bowl, needs a beautiful design. And I'm going to put three lines in here that'll be very subtle. They'll pick up the glaze that, um, I thought so much about what to put on it, but in the end, I liked it fairly simply stated. Now, the funnel part of the spout, I really feel like I'm over my head in this because I don't really have um, a design kind of completely worked out like I so often do. Um, and, and, and you know, the same with the bread too. I've been using a bread machine for 30 years. Um, even though I'd say the last, most of the last, you know, decade or two, I've done most of the final shaping and baking in the oven. Because my place is cold and drafty, I've used the bread machine to, you know, prepare and, um, yeah, wedge the dough and, um, Oh, control the uh, rising, the humidity and everything. So I really feel like I'm over my head that um, I, I think this is easier um, if you add enrichments to the dough, butter, fat, um, sugar, um, eggs, but I don't want to do that. And, and, and sourdough, I think, you know, that's just beyond me too. So I've been looking at low ferment um, recipes that um, happen um, cold rise in the ice box for um, some time, you know, a, few, a day or two or more. So if, um, <laughs> if anybody has experience with um, their own home milled flour, let me know. 
um, some of the people who prepared videos on it. Um, the Home Farm Kitchen channels. It just made it so confusing that um, when I actually bought the machine and used it for the first time, it was like, well, there's nothing to this on at least um, milling the flour. But on the, uh, I've, I've done about five, I've done buns, I've done, um, let's see, I've done buns, I've done an enriched loaf, I've done English muffins, a long ferment, and um, something else, but um, I only had two fails, and they were both on a bread that I had done very successfully the first time round. So here is our funnel that's going to come off. Oh, I really don't know about this. I may be over my in over my head, just like I am with the <laughs> the flour milling your own flour. I'm so good at this putting spouts. I don't do teapots, but I've done so many spouted jugs that I'm quite good at this with those. But this is on the side of a bowl. This is a different entirely. But with the flour. That, okay, yeah, I don't want it coming off the side. And then, actually, it could be up here, like that. So, we'll try carving these down um, so they fit. With the flour, there's um, terms like bolting and extraction and hydration. Sourdough, I know, is beyond me, at least at this point. Um, uh, I, I've been wanting to do mixing bowls. I've been wanting to do mixing bowls. Um, I think I'm going to stay with... Okay, this one I thought would be good up higher. But I think I'm going to stay with one that comes right off the side. Design-wise, it almost looks like a handle. So I think I'll stay with that. And then I always think about where to put it. If there is a head and tail of the snake, I usually put that out the back. And put this, I think, right here. I've been wanting to do mixing bowls. Um, just mixing bowl bowls, no spouts, no handles um, that you use in the kitchen to mix. And and th th but there's so much that can go wrong. You have to have three that match to make a mixing bowl set. So my trick is to make um, you know a dozen and sort through for three to match. But then you've got to get three where the glaze all comes out to look like a set. And then not only that Okay, so this middle part is going to be cut out. So I don't have to worry about being sloppy there with the scoring. On the mixing bowl sets, let's see, what other problems were there? Um, let me reach back here to the slip bucket. Um, okay, so three that match. The glazes need to come out so they look good together. And... You know, I, I think the next biggest thing was <laughs> the market. The actual market for the pieces. Okay, I'm just pushing this into this. I, I have a slip decoration, so I'm going to push this into the side, but I don't want to play with it. And, um... Okay, have to do anything with the decorative element there. Is there really a market for them? They would have to be so much. Um, would there be somebody, people willing to pay that much for it? Okay. I'm going to cut out the center. Um, but that brings me down to maybe what I need to do, like I've done with everything else, just make it smaller than it should be. So it comes into a price range that people will pay. Um, make mixing bowls that are so small that you really can't use them for anything. But people 
are into the idea of it, you can maybe actually sell them. So I, I may just leave a couple of these bowls plain to see if I, um, because it's still a mixing bowl even if it's not a set, and see what kind of market um, response I get. Okay, so now it's just a matter of smoothing this out and in here I will put a coil and clean this up. And so we will fill it with flour and hopefully yeah, down lower. This might work better than the spout. Batter bowls. Mixing bowls. Some things might be best as a one-of. And sometimes we need to do something for ourselves. And was it just luck? Or does fresh grain really make the difference? Stop back and see what we cook up or fires up in the studio next week.